Where have you been? I've been sitting here since the last video waiting for you to come. I even had a chance to change my t-shirt. <laughs> so if you take a look around on this channel, you will find that one row pops up time and time again. Well, two. It's a 30 minute low intensity row. I either do it at 20 strokes a minute or at 18 strokes a minute and then just alternate most of the time between those two. Why? Because it's such a good session to do. It's great for building your fitness. It's great for burning off some calories. It's great for giving you time and space to work on your technique. And therefore, it makes you a better rower and a better person. And it's because I want to punish you for all the bad things you've done in your life. <laughs> no kidding um but yeah that's what we're doing today we're going to do a 30 minute row and we're going to do this one at 18 strokes a minute because we've done a couple of 20 strokes a minute so far this week so just mix it up doing 18 and your pace well we're looking at round about 2k plus 20 pace that means 20 seconds slower than your average 500 meter pace during a two kilometer time trial now if that just went <laughs> nonsense into your face don't worry about it if you look at the description to this video you'll see i've written it out underneath all the details of this workout what your 2k pace is how to work it out how to apply it to your training i'm going to talk more about this as we get into the main session though that whole pace thing however we need to get into a four minute warm-up just to make sure our body is ready to rock in our main session so on the concept two that means going to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be if you don't know anything about drag factor i've got a video here on the channel if you know a little bit a bit about it about don't know where to set it then please just set it to 130 ish then you can adjust from there if you know nothing about it set your lever between four and five okay too low isn't the problem too high is the problem when it comes to drag factor if you're in a non-concept two then what i want you to do is set the resistance or whatever you have so you get a nice feel from the stroke you can hang off the handle but you don't have to heave against it and tug it in order to get your machine moving next up if you can please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up you don't have to look down and finally if you are able to adjust your foot stretch your heights, your foot plates, set them so that as you come forwards, you can get your shins into a vertical position comfortably. Too high, it might be a bit of a struggle. Too low, you might go scooting past that uh, vertical position and that can cause power leaks and potential injury. But it's really about the power thing and your kind of technique starts to go a bit awry when you go past that vertical position. Okay, so we're gonna do four minute warm up. We're gonna start this at around about 20 strokes per minute. And I just want you to think about enough of a push from your feet that you can feel the power connect into the handle. Okay, so it's not a powerful start to this warm up. It's a warm up after all. Okay, oh look, the sun's about to come out. Got my sunglasses on just in case, but we'll see. Anyway, here we go then. So around about 20 strokes a minute in three, two, one, go. Now, if you are used to rowing my sessions, I know that the way I start, these warm-ups is starting to get a bit repetitive, but I want you to think about pushing with your feet at the same time your handle and your hands connect to your machine. Okay, so the whole point here is that you are pushing your feet. And that was my leg I tapped. That's not my foot, there we go. Your feet into the foot plates to generate the power. But obviously you have to get that power into the handle and so timing is part of that that you make sure your handle connects to the machine at the same time your feet push into the machine but also if you want to have straight arms that stops your arm muscles fighting against the power and a forwards tilt so that you are, well, tilted forwards. <laughs> Hence the phrase forwards tilt. And what that does is it means that your posterior chain gets activated to just pass through the power from your legs up through your body, into your shoulders, your arms, hands and the handle. Yes, you can still push with your legs, leaning backwards, but it now goes nowhere near that power transfer. It's really inefficient, okay? So forwards tilt. Okay, in three strokes time, I'm gonna take one foot out, put it on the ground and continue rowing. So last one, thumb out, here we go. Continue rowing. So if you just push outwards on the buckle with your thumb, 
and then flick your toe up towards you. That should be enough to quickly release your foot from the foot straps in case you've never really investigated a quick release. <laughs> okay, last stroke here. We do the same, so thumb flick. Oops, that wasn't particularly quick, was it? And then continue with the other leg. This is just giving you a chance to open up your hips a little bit because you've only got one leg strapped in. You can think about just a bit of a concentration of that leg push for the one that's still strapped in. Let's do two more here. And then we'll put both feet in. Don't worry about strapping them up again. Just put them in, leg straight, and roll with your back and arms. So you swing over your back first, and that kind of connects, that takes the initial brace, the initial, yeah, connection of the handle to the machine. And then once your back starts to swing, that's when you pull the handle in, then release it, and then tilt back over your hips again. Okay, let's roll to the front, tighten the straps on the way, and then with arms straight and that forward tilt, just press out from the front. Really no power here, okay? Because all I want you to do is experience holding the forward tilt and straight arms while your legs press from the front. You hold this position, this forward tilt and arm straight. Okay, let's do two more here. And this is just the drill that you do over and over and over again if you just can't get used to holding that position if you're an early swinger and things. Hey, swinger, I've got my keys here. <laughs> Kidding, I'm not into that. No, no, no. Right, sorry, I've completely gone away somewhere. That was our four minute warm up. Uh, should just get us ready for our low intensity main session, which I am about to describe. Okay then, so today's main session is gonna be a 30 minute row at 18 strokes a minute. And your pace is gonna be round about 2K plus 20, but it's really done that low intensity. So you're looking at around about five out of 10 effort. Now remember five out of 10 means that you're putting in some kind of effort, but you're not putting in loads, but you're still putting in some. Okay, so your heart rate should kind of get up to round about 60 to 70% of your max. Your breathing rate will be up, but you'll be able to ease hold a conversation you might have to stop every now and then like the other person speak from time to time so you can take a breather but this really shouldn't be one where you get tested at all this is giving you time to work on your technique your fitness and to just have a good old 30 minute row that's going to burn off a bunch of calories and you go hmm, that was a good workout okay so it's half a, half an hour straight rowing so i'm gonna have a quick drink before i get into it it's not too warm outside today but there's still a chance that sun comes out or just the 30 minutes worth of rowing is going to be enough to dehydrate you so if you need to stop during the row do stop this isn't a time trial it's a training thing <sighs> right eh, sunglasses keep them off for the time being okay here we go let's say 18 strokes a minute follow me on the video for stroke rate or listen to the whoosh of my flywheel on the podcast and you should be okay here we go in three two one go <laughs> i don't know if you caught it but there was a giant crack of my left knee just then as I took the first stroke. <laughs> this whole thing about rowing is supposed to be non-impact and good for your knees. Not when that happens. <laughs> but it is though. And that's one of the reasons why it's a good idea not to do that over compression into the front. You just want to come forwards so your shins are vertical and that's enough. If you over compress into the front, then it's quite easy to get like patella tendonitis or any other knee issues, to be honest. But most of the reason I do continue the, the whole thing of shins vertical is about power leaks. Because I definitely, even the past couple of days, watching these videos that are a slightly different angle from how I normally film them. We're a bit kind of diagonal really, aren't I? Whereas when I'm in the green screen studio, it's very much a side on affair. But I've really been able to see 
that although I'm getting my shins vertical as I come forwards, that little butt scoot, it's not going anywhere. It's still there, there's like a weird kind of rock forwards and backwards that my backside does if I'm not concentrating. Which obviously I'm doing right now because I'm talking to you about it, but when my concentration lapses then that little butt scoop goes and that's definitely the cause of at least one second pace loss for me when it comes to the faster rows although one good thing that this angle revealed in yesterday's row was that as I push my feet push with that forwards tilt and arms straight I could actually see my backside kind of rise up lift very slightly off the seat not totally because otherwise the seat would disappear from underneath me and trust me you don't want to have that happen and then land on the rail that's a very painful thing to do but I could see that my backside was obviously lighter on the seat because there was a little sliver of light that would open up on every drive and that's what you want as you push your feet into the machine and you have straight arms and that forwards tilt this whole thing of hanging off the handle if you get it right should feel as though your backside is a little lighter on the seat <clears throat> there's a great video by the folks at Decent Rowing where I think it's Lachlan leans over the front of the machine and holds on to the handle and then the rower kind of drives in with their feet and because he's holding the handle stopped and kind of because of the angle of the foot plates the rower ends up literally hanging in the air with only their feet and their hands connected their backside is like six inches off the seat because that power isn't going into the machine and it's kind of because of the body angles it makes them lift off the seat that's what you want that's how you know you are pushing connecting and hanging from the handle right so we're just past five minutes gone hopefully you're just into the flow you've hit the stroke rate you don't need to listen to me or watch me you're just in a good flow and as for pace well like I say the guide for this is 2k plus 20 so 20 seconds slower than your current 2k time trial pace now, it's a very cookie cutter approach that one not everybody responds 
well to the 2K pacing idea, be it because you are super fit or you're just starting on the machine. Maybe you have an old 2K time, which means that your training pace is either soft and you need to go a little bit faster or it's actually too high and you're working too hard. For instance, even, well, say four years ago, I was a 6.36 2K kind of guy. So my training pace was that divided by four, which is one minute 39. So my 2K average was one minute 39 per 500 meters. Now, due to injury, illness, COVID, and a general lack of desire to do a 2K out with a race situation, I haven't done one in a while. I think the last 2K I did was 6.41. So I just call that a 140 average. Now, if I were to still be using that training pace after a couple of years of injury and illness, I'd be working way too hard here. I'd be rowing this at two minutes pace rather than 205 because I've recalibrated my 2K to 145 average. And to be honest, that might still be a little adventurous. <laughs> But, but the point is what I'm trying to meander my way around to is that for sessions like this the whole 2k plus 20 pace guide will work for a lot of people that will keep the heart rate down it will be a low intensity row, but some people, it's still gonna be a little too hot. So if you find that the intensity drifts quickly, I mean, we're only 10 minutes in, so this should still feel nice, low intensity. My heart rate is a uh, 60% of max. But if you find you've already skyrocketed either with heart rate or just your perceived effort, maybe this feels more like a seven out of 10. Then back off the pace See, for these low intensity workouts, slower is better. Okay? If you go too fast and you start to drain your fuel tank, then you're not getting the value. And don't let your ego get in the way. It did for me for a while where I was adamant that I didn't want to train and see two something on the monitor. So I'd always, even for 2k plus 20 pace, 
I do that at 159. Because my ego was like, two minute pace is slow. But your ego writes checks that your body can't cash, Maverick. <laughs> I literally just fell into that quote. Your ego is writing checks that your body can't cash. <laughs> but it's true. If your ego is saying, oh, don't want to row this slow. All that will happen is you'll drain your energy. You'll not be as fit and powerful for the fast stuff. And you could just hit real overload, drain your system, fatigue sets in, and you just feel like you never got a chance to recover. Because a session like this, although it will use up a good amount of fuel in your tank, it's not so intense that a good night's sleep and some good food won't refill you for tomorrow's session. And again, if you do this right, it improves your fitness and actually grows your tank so you can fit more fuel into it because your fitness is improving due to these low intensity, long, slow rows. <clears throat> okay, lecture over. Well, it's not really a lecture. Let's are almost over. So what I'm saying is, if you feel you need to row at 2k plus 25 to keep it at a low intensity, then that's what I want you to do. Let your ego shine in the fast stuff, not for the slow stuff. So, Coming up for, well, just past 14 minutes gone. My heart rate is still at 60. Even though I'm talking to you and stuff. <laughs> Sun is still having moments of coming out. But it's not too bad. And even if it does, I have my secret weapon, a new row along wristband, sweatband, see? Lovely white sweatband with my RA logo on it. Okay, one stroke. You ready? Sing along. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa. Living on a prayer. But we're not living on a prayer. It should be easy. Is there a song about it's a piece of pie? Cherry pie? That's why I sing to my daughter Holly in the mornings when I wake her up. Wake up, Holly pie. Strangely, she doesn't find it funny when <laughs> she's just been rudely torn out of whatever dream she's just had. <sighs> but she kind of has to go to school, so. Uh, but yeah, I decided I wanted a couple of wristbands for when I'm rowing on the hotter days, which is Useful as we were now in autumn, going into winter. Not the smartest. I'm not the sharpest sandwich in the picnic basket. These would have been better to have got made in spring. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted custom ones made. And a one-off wristband was gonna cost like 15 pounds. 
Whereas if I got a hundred of them made, I think it's a hundred. Yeah, it must be. I don't think it's 200. Anyway, then it only costs three pounds each. Of course, it does mean that I have 98 wristbands in a box now. <laughs> and as much as I tend to sweat through my kit, I don't think I'm going to do it that quick. That I need that many. So, if you're interested, I've put them into the roll along shop. And like I say, they only cost £3 each, so I'm only selling them for £3 each. Plus postage, I'm afraid. This isn't a, me trying to push merch on you just letting you know so if you go to rowalong.com you'll find the shop link in there and feel free to buy one or two if you wish but there's no pressure I'm not here to sell you stuff much like the t-shirts and the headbands the only reason there's a shop is because oftentimes it's cheaper to have it that way. I can buy them for myself for a lot cheaper than a one-off. It also means if you're looking for kit, then there's a bunch of it there. And these t-shirts really are the most comfortable I've ever worn. <laughs> I am actually doing a heavy sales <laughs> job on you now, aren't I? <laughs> oh, shut up. So, coming up for 19 minutes gone. My heart rate's drifted up. I'm now up at 65. <sighs> but cardiac drift is kind of to be expected. This is where if you were rowing on like a heart rate based training so like this session was meant to be in like the UT2 zone then if it were me I'd have to start backing off the pace in order to keep my heart rate within the training zone There's absolutely nothing wrong with training that way. What you find is after a few sessions like this, you wouldn't have to slow down as much. And that's a tangible thing to see. Okay, 10 minutes to go. However, I still prefer this 2K plus pacing strategy <sighs> because it's well unforgiving really if you get tired fatigued even if you're having a bad day the numbers don't lie 2k plus 18 is the same whether you are tired or recovered the only thing that changes your pace is if you do another 2k time trial and again you want to make sure and do that time trial on a day when you're ready to really go for it there's no point doing a time trial on a day when you are tired fatigued the only day that that should happen is if everything's gone slightly awry and it's a race day and you're like oh wait a minute I've not tapered right or got my nutrition right 
and you wake up and you don't feel as ready for it. But that is when the strength of your mindset comes into play. When you say, you know what? My body may feel fatigued, but my brain is still up for this. So I'm still gonna give it everything I've got. And you know what happens sometimes? Is you get like, we you do your warm up and then you get about 300 meters into a 2K and because of the excitement of a race situation, you find you get a second wind and you're able to push and still compete. So beware of your brain trying to sabotage your race. That's why when Pam and I were doing a chat about HRV, I was saying how I don't ever check it anymore on the morning of a race because, or even a top tier workout day. Because if my watch says I've overtrained based on my heart rate variability, even if I feel amazing, chances are I'm gonna, my head will go down and I'll be like, oh, I'm tired apparently. So best not to have the tail wag the dog when it comes to tech telling you what your body's like. Because it could well be that you just had a bit of a rough night's sleep and you have a bit of nervous excitement about the race ahead and that has been what has skewed your HRV results. So basically, always think about the situation, your body, your mental state, and prepare yourself for how you feel and how you need to feel. <laughs> Uh, okay. See these half hour rows? I mean, half an hour is quite a long time on the machine, I suppose. But if you can just kind of switch off, almost like meditation, and just allow the groove of the stroke to carry you away. It could be over in a flash. So we are under five minutes to go. I have, I'm gonna do the maths. So is that 81 straight strokes to go, I think. Yeah. And that's easy. Even if you just count down, get to four minutes and count down from 72, it'll be over in a tick. Because look, that's a minute gone already. But keep that power going in, maintain the right pace, don't go too fast and keep that stroke rate and fatigue shouldn't really set in but if it has it's likely that your posture and your body angles 
will be what suffers. So just make sure that as you come forwards, you are up on your sit bones, powerful hips rocked forwards. Okay, so you're up, primed, ready for the next stroke. Arms straight, shoulders nice and forwards so you can hang off your shoulders, off the tendons and ligaments. That hip rock forward should mean you are tilted towards the front of your machine. Look straight ahead, so your chin should be neutral, fingers are hooked over the handle rather than a death grip, and your thumbs should be underneath the handle rather than on top, as I can often divert the flow. I've been in quite a few email discussions with people who say, oh, I find it's easier with thumbs on top. But so far, 100% of those people have sent me a video and they are people who pull from the front. Okay, so you want to keep those arms straight and only pull at the back. So drive, pull. Drive, pull. Okay? And if you're an early grabber, early puller, then you are wasting potential leg power and potential arm power. Because I have the whole distance woof, of my arms to pull at the back of the stroke because I've used my legs at the front of the stroke. And then at the finish, handle comes in to sternum height. You can hear it clicking off my heart rate monitor. So you're not finishing low into your belly button, nor are you finishing high above your sternum, sternum height. Elbows slightly out, but behind, and that engages your lats rather than your delts and your forearms if you were to go chicken wings. Oh, slowed right down there. It's going to mess up my average. Three. Two. Last stroke. One. That was a good way to fill the time at the end, wasn't it? A quick chat about technique. <laughs> As being, apart from the warm up, I didn't say anything about technique in today's row. So, have a drink. And then I'm going to load in a two minute cooldown. Where is it? There we go. If you're using the ErgZone app, then if you go to the row along track, not only does it contain most of my workouts since 2020, I think, but under the label bookmark these, you will find my various warm up and cooldown uh, workouts <laughs> that you can quickly then load up rather than having to punch in two minutes or four minutes or whatever. So I'm going to do this strapless again. You can join me with strapless, but if you've never done it before, just loosen your straps so that if it goes wrong, you can catch yourself with your feet. Here we go in three, two, one. I want you to do this and round about the warm up pace. Okay, so you're rowing slower than you were just rowing the main session. That gives your body a chance to just recover, for it to slide into a stop instead of you 
working relatively hard. I mean, oh, I didn't check my final heart rate, sorry. But you don't want to be working your heart rate up and then just stop. Because your heart's got quite a long way to just fall. Falling is never good. Plummeting is even worse. <clears throat> so you do a cool down just to help slide yourself into neutral, but also gives you a chance to, as Gwyneth Paltrow would say, mentally decouple. <clears throat> Unless she's a rower, but. Uh, but just kind of just decouple from the concentration of holding a specific rate and pace and thinking about technique and listening to my waffle I know the waffle continues but <laughs> and then just lets you oh, do things like concentrate on that forwards tilt and arm straight as you push because if you're pushing too hard from the front you can see it's like my butt scoot it can make it worse whereas when you slow things down it gives you more of a chance because you're not having to fight against the power that you're laying into the machine because remember for concept two the more power you put in the heavier the stroke feels but of course the faster you go whereas a nice light push makes the stroke feel lighter and therefore I'm not having to fight against that weight to keep the flywheel turning or that kind of stuff so right so let's move into a stretching session if you don't have time to stretch that's fine but just make sure and pay a little bit of attention to stretching your quads and your hamstrings not in the shower because i don't, don't want you to slip and fall but do try and stretch them because you don't want them to get all bound up and sore or stretchy john has just appeared and he will take you through some guided stretching for the next few minutes or you can follow me as i stretch in and around the machine this is perfect for if you don't have a stretching mat next to you all that kind of stuff so we'll start off with hamstrings like we always do so get your legs feet back in the straps nice and loose for me still legs down hands in the air and fold forwards and as i do that right in my hamstrings right at the back got that bang on the first time gets a good stretch if you feel it's like behind your knees in your stevens <laughs> uh then you might want to just adjust some angles. Maybe you're sitting too far back in the seat. Maybe your feet are in the wrong position. Maybe you've just not folded down right, in which case put your hands in the air and fold that chest down and forwards again. Fold being the key there, okay? It's not about kind of curling down. It's about folding like a hinge. Okay, so that's hamstrings, getting a nice little stretch. Of course, I race through these, but you don't have to. Next up, we'll do our glutes. So put one foot up on the rail. Other foot comes over the top. I've started the wrong way around again. In fact, do that. Whee. And then pull this knee across your body, hold it in place with the other arm, put a hand on the back of the machine and just rotate in. Okay, it didn't take much, but the rotation kind of in and down towards my uh, hips, towards my glutes, means I get a nice wee stretch. That's all it takes. You can do things like adjust how much you're pulling this leg across, where that knee is against the crook of your... Uh, where that, sorry, where your foot's against the crook of your knee. Crook of your knee, is that what it is? It's certainly not Stephen under it. <laughs> I've just swapped legs, by the way, in case you're listening to this on the podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine if there was like a poster of, like the biological poster, you know, of the, the person with all the muscles and ligaments and things. If I was, <laughs> that's your Brian, that's your Steve, that's your Colin. Well, that'd be your colon, wouldn't it? <sighs> no. Oh. Quads next. So this is, these are important because they'll have got a good bunch of work. So you can rest your one hand on the monitor just to steady yourself. Flick up your other foot up to your backside, hold your heel against your backside. Now this is a very standard way to stretch, straight line between shoulders, hips and knee. But of course you might not want to stretch this way. This is sprinter stretches, which is when you basically do the same thing, but sitting on the ground. In fact, I'll do that for my other leg. So I've talked about it enough times. I don't mind getting a grass stain. I'll take one for the team. So down the ground, that leg, hopefully you're still in shot, that leg straight out in front of me. Again, this one goes against your, that part there. I'll fit my water bottles in the way. So, and then you pull against the heel, comes up to your backside. That foot is against your knee. And you want a straight line between your shoulder, your hips and your knee. Hold that in place. And then you kind of lean back and that really does right into here I 
can feel right in there now is getting a really good stretch. Actually, my shin is as well, bizarrely, I guess, because that's my toes are now kind of hyperextended from being back here. So it's a really effective stretch. This is one of the stretches I used to do all the time when I was playing squash, because um, obviously that's a very quad heavy game. The downside is that if you get it wrong, A, it can be ineffective, and B, you can kind of, it's not that like you can injure yourself, but you can end up quite going, well, that didn't do much, and I now feel quite sore. <laughs> so, but that's a great stretch. Let me do that one from time to time. This is a reminder. Let's do our forearms next. Forearms shouldn't really have got much of a kicking there, but yeah. So, oh, come on, buddy. Oh, there's my, oh, my, my wristband. So, put your hands together, push them together, okay? So, uh, 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 make your pecs dance, but then push your hands down. So, you're still pushing them together as you bring your hands down in front of you. And that force as you're pushing your hands together should give you a nice little stretch underneath your forearms and into your wrists as well. Uh, like I say, for a workout like that, shouldn't really have been that big a issue in your forearms and wrists and things, but other ones like the maybe week four session three of the 1K plan that was about power 20 strokes a minute, that could possibly have hurt or, or put some kind of soreness into your forearms. When you eventually do a 1K time trial or something, that can, because you're really kind of pulling against it quite hard to try and squeeze out power. Uh, shoulders, so hand in front of you, cross your body, and then hold it against your body, and I'll just stretch out your shoulder at the top. I still haven't, still haven't found out that lat stretch that I saw when they did the shoulders as well. Just write this stuff down. So let's have that as a hashtag to remind me. Hashtag shoulders, okay? So I like to throw out a shit or a swap arms. I like to throw out a hashtag at the end of a video just so that I know you got this far. Um, and we'll randomly have this one as shoulders. Because hopefully then when someone posts a comment, hashtag shoulders, I'll go, oh, I've got to find out that stretch. Oh, well, it's lats though, isn't it? That was fine because it's all combo. It's a good thing you're not paying for this really, isn't it? <laughs> okay, biceps next. So I'll sit this way, hands behind you, so you're flying. Wee! look at me, mum, I can fly. But then ro rotate your thumbs outwards, okay? And that rotation, you should feel like, don't, I find myself gonna just do that again, shrugging my shoulders up. It's all about the rotation of the thumbs, not about your shoulders going up into your ears. <laughs> that should stre stretch your, your biceps enough. And then finally, triceps. So one hand in the air, bring it down to touch your spine, and then use your other hand to help that elbow back so that your elbow's now pointing straight up to the sky. Reach for the sky. Yeah, and that should give your tricep a wee stretch. Again, your triceps. If you end up with really sore triceps, then chances are it's that on your return, when you release the handle, you're really tensing and you're kind of come forward and you're rigid. Okay, and you don't want to be rigid, you want to be nice and loose and floppy in your, through your arms. Um, other one, other arm. So if you end up with sore, you really shouldn't have sore triceps from rowing. So if you do, it's because you're so tense in that recovery. So try and loosen up. Loosen up, man. And I've said before that the way I think about it is like a zombie. So if you were to go, oh, a zombie, obviously your wrists shouldn't be like this, okay? Because you need to hold a handle. And zombies would be rubbish at rowing. <laughs> The shoulders are nice and loose, so everything's kind of around. And that's as you come forward, you want to be nice and loose. Not a, a hammer's up in the air. Nice and loose as you come forward. And then as you take the stroke, you then brace against it. But you're still not grabbing and going tense. Okay, remember that's what I was saying about hooking over the handle? Is that you hook and that kind of helps that straight line. The moment you tense, everything comes... Yeah, you think it'd help. You would, wouldn't you? You think that by being rigid, hey, that's going to help. But it doesn't. Stay loose, let that power just go straight through and life is a lot easier, or your rowing is a lot easier. Maybe not life, that is a lot harder because you're rowing really hard. It's the whole thing about it never gets easier, you just go faster, which is just annoying, isn't it? <laughs> so, right, I'm gonna do end workout. Today's details, so total calories for today's workout for me, 430. Active calories, 350. But that's still a nice big cookie uh, if I was to eat one. Uh, but then what it means is that I can go and have a nice uh, my chicken noodles for lunch, a couple of protein shakes throughout the day. My I've got a, I've got a shake that I really need to make for you. <laughs> this green thing that I make that's actually not the most tastiest thing in the world, but it's got like hemp, spirulina, um, all this kind of stuff in it that's really good for you. But it's you, you can tell it's good for you because it tastes just questionable. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling. So I should really stop, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, that's it. So we were done as week four, session four. So week four, session five of the 1K plan naturally follows. Oh, it's like maths. And that's uh, going to be 
a good old tough one, okay, so this is going to be a great way to finish the, the week and kind of we've been leading up to kind of doing this kind of a session. And then next week is going to be about just kind of refining little parts um, and then session four. I think session five of next week is then some kind of big blowout row, okay, whether that's your 1K row or something else, it's up to you, but that's what's in store next week, all right? So thank you so much for being part of this one, whether this was just a standalone row or whether you're part of the 1K plan, I do hope you enjoyed it. Let's hope so. Let's hope I can continue to row outside, that the weather continues to be nice enough for me to do this, because if nothing else, see for post-production, it's so much easier to put this together than having to deal with the green screen and, uh, and think of a background to put in or whatever. Sorry if I've just <laughs> spo spoiled the magic. This isn't a green screen. This is real. This, this, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so thank you so much for being part of this one. I will see you in one of the next videos, whether that's week four, session five, or one of the myriad other ones I have up here on the channel. I look forward to seeing you in that one. Until then, take care. Be well. Bye-bye.